right, folks. We are on our very first ride on the mighty Rocket Taxi. This bike comes all the way from Georgia. And I decided today was going to be the day that we're going to ride it for the first time because it's the first nice day of the year. It's about 75 to 77 degrees. To talk a little bit more about this bike. It's a 2016 Yamaha R1. It's the 60th anniversary. It has a full arrow exhaust on it. I'm not sure what filter's in it. it. Might be an MWR or a Sprint filter. I know it's a good one. And it's already been tuned by somebody else. It is lowered a little bit on the forks, as you can see. There is a strap on it and it is currently strapped down. It has a very nice sound to it. I have to say about these cross plane motors is they do sound good. Motor is uh, very responsive, feels pretty good. some goodies back at the shop for this bike. The most important one is an evil 2-6 to six swing arm. That'll be going on soon. This will probably be the only time I ride this bike in its delivered state. I'm hoping I can make some pulls on the thing today. They won't be very long pulls. But it is the middle of the day on a Friday and there will probably be some traffic. So... Hopefully I'll be able to get some judgment of how the bike pulls with the power it currently makes. A little side note too, the bike is currently running on MR12. Now I do hope I get the opportunity to actually tune this bike. Uh, but if not, I do have another guy that's coming with a 2015 red one. I believe he's doing all the setting up to it. It's going to be getting a swing arm, uh, rotors deleted, stuff like that. He's going for the max effort straight line thing. And I am going to be tuning that bike, which means I will be able to mail tune R1s. Definitely not used to the clutch and the throttle of these bikes. Very different from the Kawasaki and the Suzuki. good leaving out a second gear I did hit the limiter right there on the one uh, excuse me on the two three shifts not exactly sure where to shift this bike yet or even looking for a shift light I just felt like riding the bike out right there it does have uh, traction control system still enabled I'm not quite sure how to turn that off yet but I've spent about one minute trying to figure that out so I just put it on its least invasive mode um, the front tire didn't attempt to come up there at all but we're doing second gear hits and the bike is fully strapped down right now so right here I'll probably be able to make a little bit longer of a pull to get an idea of how she feels all right the Georgia guys like to do 60 rolls so let's see what she's got out of second gear from 60. Feels 
pretty good. I think I found the shift light. I think it's this blue little light right here. You'll have to pardon my ignorance. This is my first time ever riding an R1. All right, I wanted to get off the highway so I could actually talk to you guys about my opinions of the bike. Too much wind noise on the highway. And not to mention this bike is loud as hell. I'll find that friction point of this clutch one day. One day. So my initial thoughts on ripping through the gears real quickly on the bike, starting from second gear. Strapped down, it's very manageable out of second gear. I never felt uh, the wheelie control or track control do any kind of interference. It felt like a pretty clean pull. That being said, it does pull pretty good. It does make some good power. It is on MR12 as well. But for the most part, this bike came to me to be made efficient because he wants to use first gear he wants to beat people in races and that's the whole point of doing this shit is to beat people in races so the idea here we're going to make this thing completely efficient we'll see how much weight we can get out of it in the process and then hopefully he enjoys the finished product i will get you guys some draggy times once the arm is on this bike i'm going to trailer the bike to my spot so i can show you guys some legitimate 60 to 130s and stuff like that to see how the R1 is competing there. From what I saw from Brado's R1 down in Dallas, they can definitely run pretty good. Now he was substantially lighter than everybody else, which does play its part. With that being said, that bike still ran really good. So we'll see what we can do with these. I do believe Dom, the owner of this bike, is about 200 pounds or so. I could be mistaken. The other R1 I'm going to be doing, oh, I forgot, that's right, this bike has a quick shifter. I disable my quick shifter on the ZX-10 because I hate it. I only use it for wide open throttle. But anyway, the rider on the other R1 is 160 pounds, so he's got a big advantage right there. And I do believe he's going to want to go to Atlanta as well in the coming month. So we'll see uh, what we have to do. Come on. God, this bike sounds so damn good. Now, once the weather is like this more consistently, I'm gonna be able to get you more racing, more vlogging, those kinds of videos. But for now, I've just been completely swamped in the shop. We finished up with Mike's bike. He picked that up the other day. We finished up with Canada bike, which is the 2019 ZX-10 stock wheelbase uh, drag bike. So TBN has been getting a little bit of small accessories. I'm still waiting on a few in the mail. But for the most part, things are kind of starting to stabilize, especially with the weather. So I'm hoping to be able to get you videos a little more consistently. I know I missed a few, or I missed a couple weeks there, but unfortunately I was a little too busy to be making YouTube videos. It would be cool, however, to go full-time YouTube one day. That's all. I'm far away from that if that's a thing. But, and then do the bike building thing as a side hustle. 
right now I do the bike building thing as the main hustle and YouTube is the side hustle. Maybe one day those will switch so I can focus more on YouTube. Because YouTube is fun, I'll say that. It's a lot of work, but it is fun. The bike thing's fun too, but you assume a lot more responsibility in terms of customers and stuff like that. Whereas with YouTube, it's just you. Hence, YouTube. Maybe one day though, we will see. Maybe one day I'll start doing sponsored bike builds through Patreon, kind of like Eeb and, uh, and Campisi and those guys who do it. Uh, I'd probably do something a little more tailored to the style of bikes I like to build though, which are straight line bikes. That probably won't appeal to as many people as the builds that they do, but I'm fine with that. I'm fine with not reaching the masses to please the niche. Because I am the niche. This bike is pretty comfortable though, considering it's got a massive forward rake to it because it's lowered a lot more in the front, especially with the strap than the rear right now. Yeah, low RPM, she doesn't like to be down there. So I'm in third gear right now, 18 or so miles an hour. She chatters quite a bit when you give it some gas. So, not something that is easily ride aroundable. But I'm kind of semi-reviewing and getting an idea of what the R1 is. So, I like to put it in those. First gear at this speed is a little too snatchy on, on off throttle. I think second gear is probably the best gear to go through. Yeah, right there, it's real hard at low RPM when the throttle comes back on, right here. It's very, you gotta be real gentle with her or she wants to throw you off the bike. And it's got a lot of, a lot of engine braking as well on D-cell, so it kind of throws you forward. Nothing too crazy, but I'm just nitpicking right now. All right, so final thoughts on the 2016 60th anniversary R1, AKA Rocket Taxi. As you can see, lowered and strapped already. It does have lowering links on it and a 520 chain. It has a full arrow exhaust and it was on MR12. My final thoughts of riding that product was I really like the bike itself. It's a fun bike. Uh, especially cruising around, not necessarily just uh, racing, but I really found myself kind of throwing revs at it a lot, which is something that annoys me when people ride bikes. But unfortunately, this bike, I wanted to hear the exhaust note, I wanted to hear the engine. It sounds good. It's very loud with this arrow exhaust on it, which could be part of it. Uh, I don't typically like loud bikes, but I think this cross-plane motor sounds good enough to the point where when it's loud, the tone is there, everything is there. The ZX-10s, aka this one and this one, I think sound terrible with loud exhaust. They just sound hollow and noisy and nothing's really going on. Whereas the crossplane does sound good. So overall, I want to say I'm going to give this bike for a first riding experience, I'd say a 7 or 8 out of 10. The things that hurt it were again the twitchy low RPM throttle and how it's very snatchy down there. Now the R1s, like I said, are known for that. So that's not a big deal. I was expecting that, but having ridden it for the first time and experienced it, uh, I would say that would be its biggest flaw from just a riding standpoint. Uh, other than that though, believe it or not, there's not too much I really can say bad about it. Uh, I'll never give a bike a 10 out of 10, honestly, because there's no such thing as a perfect bike to me. I've never ridden the perfect bike, so I think even though I haven't really said out loud a rating for bikes. I think the most I would ever give a bike right now is a 9 out of 10. Um, and believe it or not, I want to say it's the V4R, which has been my favorite bike to just get on and ride around. So finally, here's a quick sneak peek as the next thing that's going on, this bike right here. So that's going to go on, and then I'm going to test ride this bike and get some solid GPS times. I'm going to get 60 to 130, 60 to 180, uh, maybe 100 to 150, stuff like that. I want to see what this bike does. Uh, on GPS at, I don't want to say full weight because it's not full weight, but you know, decently close to a full weight bike, and then we'll go from there. But alright, guys, as usual, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.